Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, isn't it great just to come to worship our Lord and the freedom that we have here in New Zealand? And it's great to see you all back here the, uh, this morning, and, and uh, especially our visitors. It's nice that you come to choose and worship with us on the Sabbath day. I'd like to say also, on behalf of Mary and I, a very special thanks for the prayers that have uh, ascended for uh, her hip. Uh, she's uh, She's still having troubles with it, but at least uh, the doctors are, are making a bit of progress. So um, thank you for your prayers, and it's just nice to be part of a, a wonderful big family where, where prayers are, uh, are heard. And uh, also, um, on behalf of Nara, again, she'd just like to say thank you. She's, she's well, she's moved in, and, and she's happy in, in her new home, and she thanks you also uh, for, your, for your prayers. You know, when, when it comes time to prepare a sermon, you have um, something in mind that you'd like to present, and um, the, what I wanted to present just didn't happen this week. Um, and just on talking to Bill through the week, it, uh, I, it just came about that today, what I want to speak on just had, had to be the message for today. And uh, I, I sometimes think of a, of a writer when he comes to write a book, you know, they get a few words on a piece of paper and they throw it in the rubbish bin and the rubbish bin builds up with, with paper. Well, thank God we've got a computer. That, that doesn't happen. It's just the delete button. Um, so today I'd uh, just like to ask that the Holy Spirit be with us as, uh, as I bring you this message. The other day on Thursday, Mary and I went, went shopping and, um, for, the, for the long weekend and it was amazing. You would thought that the end of the world was about to come upon us because there were people everywhere and the shop shelves were very empty, even I think we might have got the second to last loaf of bread. Uh, it was amazing to see so many people involved in this Easter weekend and to think also that this whole thing of Easter has become so commercial that months ago the shelves were full of all these glistening uh, uh, boxes of chocolates and, and, and all sorts and it was absolutely amazing. But then I came to think about it and I thought, what an audacity that the religious fathers of old had. What a cheek, and even in German, what a frechheit, what a cheek they had to insult our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Now you're most probably thinking, what's he raving on about now? But I thought, it is a cheek to have the audacity that they had um, to, to change things around in our history. The whole Western world this weekend is celebrating the festival of Easter. And now, how many of them, if asked why they were celebrating, would have different, different answers? But naturally, a comment would come through that most people are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, and as many churches do, and also celebrate every Sunday. Okay, and hence my opening statement. What an audacity that the religious fathers of old had, and what a cheek and an insult again to our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. Here we have the greatest event in the history of this world. Here we have the greatest event in the cosmic conflict, the greatest event in the whole universe, and here we have the ancient fathers um, diluting the significance of what happened at Calvary uh, all those years ago. Here we had that great event where Jesus came and paid the penalty of sin. And that is the good news, and it is the great news, and it is the news of the everlasting gospel. However, man being whom he is, and willing to be influenced by that serpent, the devil, Satan, goes and takes this historic event and again dilutes its, its significance. They dilute it by tying it in with an ancient pagan goddess, Ustre, or otherwise pronounced Estre. She was that so-called great mother goddess of the Saxon people in the northern hemisphere of Europe. Similarly, the, similarly, the Teutonic dawn goddess of fertility, also known by ten other names, translated back to Austin, Istre, or the Iostre. Her name was derived from the ancient word for spring or Istre. 
the early Frankish church included a name for the resurrection festival of Jesus. And the old Latin word alba, which means white, and hence if you go to a, a Catholic church tomorrow, you'll see that all the vestments of the priest will be, uh, will be white tomorrow. And it means, and because the word alba is the ground word for the word albino. The word alba also has a second meaning, and that is sunrise. When translating the resurrection festival into German, an error occurred. And the wrong German word was used. For sunrise, it should have been Sonnaufgang, but they translated it to Austin, which has been proposed as the origin of the word Easter, the pagan goddess. Easter falls at this time of year, as it is also the start of the spring equinox in the Northern Hemisphere, and commenced here in the Southern Hemisphere by the full moon. And I think you would have noticed that last night or the night before, the moon was so full that it was as if someone had a big um, floodlight over our house. It was absolutely brilliant. However, we too know when the resurrection and when everything took place at Calvary. We know that it was 40 days before Pentecost at the time of the Jewish Passover. This was the res when the resurrection, resurrection took place and as recorded in the Jewish calendars. They celebrated every year, so if we wanted to really know the date, we'd just have to go back through the Jewish calendars. And it's amazing. I don't know whether it's just my, my study ability, but right up until now, I have not found anywhere where Jesus stated that we are to remember his resurrection, the actual act of raising from the dead. The resurrection of rising from the dead is the climax, the crown of victory of what he had previously gone through. Jesus said himself when speaking in, to Martha, uh, she said, he said to her in John 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he said to her, Believest thou me? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus, during his ministry, also raised people from the dead. He rose, rose the daughter of Jairus from the dead. He rose Lazarus from the dead because he is the resurrection and the life. He didn't have to die and rise from the dead just to prove that he is the resurrection of the life. And it was God the Father who raised him from the dead. And he also said, though, too, that remember, if I lie down my life, I can take up my life also. The remembrance, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, is to remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. And in the celebration of his body and blood and communion, he said that we are to do that in remembrance of him. So what about this weekend? What are we basically to remember? And this is where the crunch line comes in, and that is what he wants us to remember the wages of sin is death. The suffering is what Jesus wants us to remember. He became sin for us and he took our penalty upon himself. We are to continually meditate upon that, what our Lord, our God, our Saviour went through for us from Gethsemane to Calvary. He wants us to remember that for our sin, he was spat upon, slapped, humiliated, beaten, whipped, and stripped. Crushed under the weight of the cross, and I need I mention the crown, the crown of thorns that pierced his head. Jesus wants us to remember the price that he so freely paid from a heart enormously, enormously huge, with the love for everyone within his creation, Jesus, the Son of God. And then he wants us to remember the cross, those rough, splintered pieces of timber became the structure where my Lord and Saviour was nailed to like a common criminal. He was fixed 
to that structure by nails that caused, unfortunately, more blood to flow and which stole his freedom. I heard only last Sabbath, unfortunately, of a man that rather worships in a sect than with the body of Christ because we have a cross on our church sign, a cross, the emblem of suffering and pain. The cross of Calvary is where they left my Saviour, the only Son of God, to die. Jesus wants us to remember his suffering. As he hung there on Calvary on that dark, cold evening, the sound was heard from the, throughout the darkness as he cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus suffered totally in the fullest of his humanity. The pain was very real. The separation from God was inevitable. Through him becoming sin for us was so great that he thought his father had left him. He had. God, he had to stand back because of our sin. But he stood by and watched. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani is an utterance that we will never have to use. It will never be ours because Jesus said and he promised that he will never forsake us or leave us. Let us turn now to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, readings from verses 17 to 21. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 17 to 21. It says, Brethren, join in imitating me and mark those who so live as you have an example in us. For many of us, of whom, sorry, I have told you, you and now tell you, even with tears, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly and their glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things, but our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him to subject all things to himself. This is an interesting letter from Paul. Paul is very happy the way the brethren started off the church in Philippians and he extols them for having made a good beginning in the Holy Gospel and for having acquitted themselves commendably, like men in earnest as manifest by their fruits of faith. The reason he shows the sincere and strong concern for them is his desire that they remain steadfast, not being led astray by false teachers among the Roman Jews. For at that time, many Jews went about with intent of perverting Paul's um, converts, pretending they taught something better, far better, while, the, while they drew away people from Christ and back to the law for the purpose of establishing and extending their Jewish doctrines. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you with even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, who God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who should, who should change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work whereby he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Notice here too that Paul says um, again that for many walk of whom I have told you often with weeping. He was very sad to see that so many people had become enemies of the gospel of the cross of Christ. 
Woe unto them, for judgment has come unto them. They indulge in pleasurable appetites, and earthly things are before them. This time of Easter is also another opportunity, opportune time to take inventory of our lives. It is great to be on holiday and take time off work. And uh, yesterday was just a fantastic day to be out and about. But it is time to take inventory of our lives. Where are we in connection to our relationship with our Lord? Let us use this time to reconnect to our Lord. Lord, yes, I love you and I gave my life to you. But, I, but am I spending the right amount of time, quality time with you? Are you really the centre of my life as I intended you to be? Or is appetite, worldly pleasure, my main desire? Am I building my relationship with you daily? Jesus wants us to remember that he went what he went through for us, the pain, the suffering, so that we are not critical but constructive, not tearing down but building up, and we're working together and not by trying to do it all by ourselves. The last piece of um, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, it says, For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile bodies, our, our uh, terrible bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You know, we were talking about faith this morning, but we have such a wonderful hope if we stay true to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wants us to remember it down through the ages, what he went through. That cross, we don't want to become enemies of the cross. We don't want to become enemies of the gospel. It is an emblem of suffering and pain. And uh, could we now turn to Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17? Corinthians, sorry, 1 Corinthians 1, 17. And here we have, uh, have Paul talking a bit of the background here. There was a division, a bit of a contention among the disciples about who they were followers of. Some said that we were followers of Apollo. Some said we were followers of this person, of Paul. But he says, uh, hey, is Christ divided? Um, up in verse 13 here, so he says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And in verse 17 it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. And there is power in the preaching of the word of God. That is where our faith comes from, from the hearing of the word. Verse 13 states, Is Christ divided, or was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized? And we're not to speak words of wisdom that we think is right. We are to preach the words of the, uh, of the gospel in the Spirit, and by the Spirit, whom inspired it. Verse 18, As we preach the gospel upholding the cross of Christ, it is the power, for, but to others it is foolishness for those who perish. In Galatians 6, um, 14, please, if we could turn there too. Galatians, uh, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 16, verse 14. They had a... Chapter 6, verse 14, in Galatians, it says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Here we have um, Jesus saying that God forbid that I should glory, or sorry, Paul said that, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to uphold the teaching that the cross is where 
our Lord paid that final penalty, penalty by whom the world is crucified unto me and unto the world. That is our connection. It is through the cross that we have such a, a closeness with, uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we are to remember the price that the Lord paid. We cannot separate the cross from the sacrifice of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse um, 16 Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity uh, thereby, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby in himself. We are brought back to God, reinstated as we come forth from the Garden of Eden, removing the curse of enmity with his own body. You know, it's amazing as we pick up a book or the Bible or whatever we read, I am always amazed and in awe when I meditate upon the cross of Christ. And it comes from the spirit of prophecy where Sister White said we should regularly contemplate the passion of Christ because that's, as we, as we remember, that is where our strength comes from. Uh, otherwise, we don't. Everything that Jesus did for us would be in vain. Please also turn to the book of uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And this is a wonderful exhortation that we have here in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, seeing we are, Wherefore, seeing we are also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Isn't that a wonderful piece of scripture? Here we have Jesus looking, uh, um, looking unto Jesus, he says, but he says that for the joy that was set before him, the joy that was going to be after the crucifixion, crucifixion, he still endured the cross for the whole of humanity, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He has his reward and he is waiting for us to take us home looking unto Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross. Easter is a time when so many chocolate, dark and white, is consumed throughout the country. I read a figure, something like four million something um, eggs are, are consumed at this, uh, this particular time. Whether it's eggs, rabbits or chickens or whatever, there's one animal that they forgot, and that was the Lamb of God. Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Brothers and sisters, it is the time. The time has come in the earth's history as we look upon this weekend to lift Jesus up high. Lift him up so high that everyone will see him and that we will too be able to draw men to Christ. We are running out of time, so let's start running for Jesus. My final uh, text this morning is in the book of John, chapter 12. John, chapter 12, reading from verses 23 to 27. And Jesus answered them, saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am... There shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honour. Now is my soul trouble, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause I came unto this hour.
Let us praise the Lord always for what he has done. Let us die to the old life and live a new life in him that his Father may honour us. In Jesus' name, amen. Could I just ask our musicians and uh, Bill and his team to come forward to uh, sing our final song?